What's up guys, welcome to Resar's Life. My name is Chris, thank you so much for joining me. In today's episode, we're gonna go over just a walkthrough of my shop. This is part of my series, how to sell on eBay. This is the overview of what goes on. It's a bit of an update from my previous video, so you guys can see how I run my store. And I'm gonna go over everything as an overview, and then I'll make another video going over it in detail. So please make sure to smash the like button, consider subscribing if you like information on how to run a store, and comment any questions, and I'll address them during this series. So items come in, they're already washed and dried. I essentially lay them out flat to de-wrinkle. Um, I have a couple of carts, everything is on wheels, including this, this is actually a workout bench, but still on wheels, so I can roll it up to my description station, which I'll go over in just a second. I actually have four of these carts they're actually dim sum carts so um i bought it from a restaurant that went out of business so i actually lay items flat to de-wrinkle over time i still have a steamer um and that is down the road over there before it gets photographed it gets steamed if it needs it here um is actually the final product so once everything has been described and put away it actually goes into a plastic bag um and I put my bin number, which is 571 and 1326 in the custom SKU on eBay so I can find the item later. So this is the finished product. That's why I pulled these all out. It's relatively uniform. It doesn't take me too long to pick the item because they are mostly in order. If they're oversized or I did a little bit too many, they fit above. These boxes are from Uline and these shelves are from Home Depot. Um, so these are the Husky shelves. I bought them once. I, I think the reason why I invested in these more expensive shelves is because they're really easy to sell. If you need to, to shut down your business or relocate, you can sell these shelves online in just one day. So very easy to um, you know, move shop or close down if you want to with these, these things. Um, I used to only buy shoes, as you guys know. These are stock buyouts from stores that went out of business or uh, at the end of the season, they sold me their overstock. That's where those shoes came from. All of my clothing comes from thrift stores. It's, at this point, almost 99% pre-owned clothing. Um, this right here is more thank you cards that just came in from Vistaprint. Uh, I don't have an affiliation with them, but that's who I use to print the thank you cards. Um, ship my stuff out through the US Postal Service and let's get into how I describe my items. So um, I am in a 10 by 40 storage unit and I have two of these. So I work in 800 square feet. Um, so this is the setup right here. Mine does have power. It's a commercial storage unit. So everyone that is here is a business, not, um, not a residence. So you can email me and uh, I can give you a referral code to the one that I use, which is called Saf Keep Storage. But if you you know, find one that has a light commercial license, you can work in it with power. Before I had power, I actually used this Yeti 400 generator, which, you know, is awesome. This Yeti 400 generator can power my lights for about eight hours. So I actually don't need power. Um, it's just, you know, now that I have a unit with power, it makes it a lot easier. So this is my description station. Um, I do roughly $40,000 a month in sales in this store. I do have multiple stores. I have stores that sell replenishable items, but that is a different, different topic. This one is mainly clothing. Okay. So a couple of things that just sold recently, I don't only sell common items. Like I sold this Arcteryx shirt. I also sold this Celine sweater for 150 bucks. Could have probably sold this for a little bit more, but again, you know, I'm buying my items for you know, under $5. So I'm not super greedy. If it's, if it's a really fancy brand, I either send it into the, the real real for authentication. If I, if I'm worried about it, um, this one, I wasn't because I'm, I'm pretty good at authentication. When you take a close up of the tags, it gives people the confidence that, you know, it is legitimate. Plus I have free returns. So, you know, I still, I definitely have a lot of home runs. I think that people confuse people who do volume with people who don't have home runs. I think people who do volume always have the most home runs actually. Um, so this is my description page. This is a Google document. I essentially write the title, how much I want to sell it for the bin and the item number you guys saw earlier. Um, so the bin is where it lives. This is the item number. So with, with clothing, there's six different ways I take measurements. Um, so I actually like to do more than the competition 
the best that I can. So I'm going to write the measurements in and I'm going to take photos of the measurements later. I'm going to add that. I'm not at that point yet. Um, I run a fake sale. So over here is the price I want to sell for. And my spreadsheet automatically adds in what I want to price it at. So it'll be priced at $19.22, but discounted to $14.99 after. And I have some different notes like these ones are have no flaws so i put item gently used well cared for but if there's an issue with the item i will write that so i wanted to do everything without moving my feet so this is a work in progress to my left these are the items that are going to be listed next they're folded you can't tell but these are actually folded nicely so when i pull it off right here i'll do the measurements right so i'll come through do the measurements i'll add the thank you card um this thank you card has been awesome i have a template for it if you guys want to use that um so the thank you card goes inside of it. Um, it's measured and then it gets put into onto this shelf for photography. So descriptions here. I, I need to find a way to get it from here over here a little bit more seamlessly because it's a little bit wonky. It goes on to here. I photograph it. Um, this is a six by seven foot photo box. Um, all of the items in this video are in the description below at bit.ly slash reseller supplies. So you can see this material, it actually sticks to the item. It's actually not held on anything, right? This is uh, not going to work with every item. It's going to work on some items. And so I like this material. People had asked what the material is, so I actually bought some of it. And I will be selling it in my eBay store, so you can go ahead and click on the link below, and I'll sell you some. Not something I normally like to do because it's not related to my, my business, but... Um, if my audience wants it, this is the actual fabric you can buy at Joann's and um, that's where I got it. It's utility fabric. I believe this is the stuff that they use on the inside of oven mitts. I could be wrong, but I think that's what this is for. Please correct me in the description if I am wrong. So this is actually a little bit more advanced than it looks. This is behind a painter's canvas. So painter's canvas is a great surface to use for photographs also because it absorbs light. So I have the fabric on top of canvas, but I used to do photos on top of canvas and I think the photos actually looked better than on this kind of sticky fabric, but I just do it because the photo, the photos, um, actually I just use this fabric because the items stick to it, but right on the canvas is actually better. Some people use carpet too, because it absorbs the light. Okay. So this is a giant light box. It's seven feet tall, six feet wide. It can take pictures of almost anything. Below, I have a coffee table from Ikea. You can use anything like this. The reason why I have this below is so I, my feet can actually go underneath this. And what that does is it allows me to walk up almost to my chest is touching the surface. So it's easier to maneuver. Otherwise, the bottom of this would stick out and your feet would get in the way. So it's designed so that it's anti-fatigue. Everything is at chest height. Um, I no longer take the photos in my store anymore or do the describing. I've actually hired people to do it. So when you get to a certain stage and you have your process down, it's really easy to hire someone to do it because it's very, very streamlined. We have coffee here. I've got a lucky cat. All of my supplies um, for shipping are actually above. So we only ship in really four different containers, um, 9 by 12 poly mailer, 12 by 15 poly mailer, the, the two flat rate envelopes that are cardboard and then the flat rate padded envelope, which is normally right here, but I haven't moved it down yet because I've been busy. So this is where the shipping supplies are. I have a Rolo printer and I have a Dymo printer on deck. Um, right now, the Dymo printer is having problems, but that's one of the reasons why I switched to the Rolo printer. Um, so we're handwriting labels for right now, but I'm going to get this fixed ASAP. This is kind of one of the reasons why two is one and one is none. So this is actually out of commission right now. So I need to fix this Dymo, but the Rolo has been rolling strong, been awesome. I love this, uh, vertical, um, dock for the MacBook pro. Um, but you know, the new MacBook air, uh, and the new MacBook, uh, M1 processor, I'm going to do some videos on. Um, they're actually much better than the old version. This is just something I put in here because it's used for the descriptions. But I actually use a different process for listing, which I'll go over later. But I describe the items in one process. So I use this and I combine it with the photos to actually make the listing. As you are starting, what you want to do is essentially create a station for each process. If you're doing it at home, 
one station is probably where you do everything and that's okay but as you get more streamlined i like having a separate station because separating it out is just good for your mental real estate um, so once it's photographed it's put in the here it's actually packaged right so once we get the item we package it nicely and then we put it into the bin so it can be put away i might actually switch to this horizontal because it's easier to find the item as you go through so this goes in here number five five four you know, you know i'm going to walk over here and i'm going to put it away at five five four so you know some people don't actually resell on youtube and they just talk about it so they can sell you a course um, i definitely have a course for sale but i actually resell so take a look at my store i might have the biggest store out of youtubers um, it's just daily refinement like my youtube channel go ahead and check it out um and i'll you know you can see my sales in there but i want to show you guys how to look up the sales so i don't have to address uh, comments later okay so you're going to go to my store you're going to click on my feedback score and then so you'll see here you can see in the feedback in the last uh, 12 or month i had 680 feedback um right so but if you click on the items for sale and you go down here and scroll down to sold this is how people re research people's stores you'll see there's only 30 sales in the last 90 days right obviously i did not have 30 sales in the last 90 days these are either returns or replenishables that i have more than one item of that's what these are uh, if you go into the feedback left for others um, right here you can see all thirteen thousand sales i've had in the last year and if you want to meticulously go through here and figure out what i sell you're going to be really disappointed because i don't sell anything fancy Levi's, Nike, Calvin Klein, Lee, Hollister, Levi's, Converse, nothing that you can't find yourself. I just do an above average job describing things so it's easier for people to buy from me. Nothing I do is really fancy. Here's like a, a you know, Nike windbreaker. Nothing fancy about this, okay? You can find this at your local thrift store. Even if they are overcharging you, if you know what you're doing, you can find something, still make a decent profit on it. Do your best to describe the item like people can't see the pictures and do your best to take photographs like they can't read a description. That's the best advice I can give you. Take the best photos you can, write the best title you can, price it you know, as accurately as you can. I have the measurements right there in the condition description because people are too lazy to scroll down. So, and I have flat rate shipping for all of my items at $6.99 just to make it easier. Okay, so of course, I could list it for a lot more. I could have it like 10 different ways that I ship, but just to make it easy, $6.99 for everything. Stuff that's more expensive and that goes in, in boxes. Behind this, I have medium flat rate boxes that I don't use very often. I still charge $6.99. I just mark my item up higher to compensate for that additional cost. Um, right here, um, I have a magnetic thing with all of our pens. It's running kind of low, but I usually have all my stuff here within reach. I can literally do my entire business in one spot. Um, this gaff tape has been really useful. Tape measure, hand sanitizer, because, you know, we're, we're operating in a time that, you know, needs this. Spray everything down at the end of every session. And then I record my notes in the Make Progress Daily Progress Journal that I made. So people have been asking me why this is so boring and why it looks like it's the same every single day. Well, the reason why it's the same every single day is because success is really boring. It's just about doing the same thing over and over and over again. So all I write down in here on a blank page is, what business process would have the most impact on my goal? What would make this process great? What action will have the most pro impact on this process? And how could I have made today better? That's it. I just think about this literally 24 seven. I write down something so I can see how far I've come. It's easy to forget how far you've come because everyone starts with their system of something on the floor. Uh, then they, you know, do whatever they can, take a picture of it on the back of a, a bathroom door. And then it turns into a more streamlined process where everything looks the same. I package everything in clear plastic. You do not have to do that. Okay, it's just something that I do. Um, more expensive items like this jumpsuit. This is a Valentino jumpsuit. Uh, I'll probably send this into uh, the real real, even though I, you know, from my experience selling luxury goods, this should be legit. Um, you know, this is really cool. I might keep it for myself if it was my size. Just kidding. But I'm not opposed to wearing a romp, a romper, or a romp him. Um, but yeah, on these finer designer items, 
uh, I sometimes send them in, sometimes I send them, sell them myself. Um, I would say, you know, maybe one out of every thousand items I thrift is worth a lot. Here's another Bolo uh, Veronica Beard. So this has been a fantastic brand for me. I find it occasionally sell super well. Um, I think, I don't know why this brand is popular, but let me know in the comment section below. I'm just barely getting my feet wet in the uh, women's apparel section. So right here, I have another set of pants that are de-wrinkling. Um, but as you can see, laying everything flat, I mean, this is a terrible example, but if you look at my photos over time, they are actually de-wrinkled. Um, but again, this could be a lot cleaner. It could be a lot more organized, um, but you know, you do what you can. Sometimes it's okay to let people know that you are a work in progress. So don't be afraid of that. Down here, I have the rejects. So these are the things that didn't make it. So in here, right, you'll see something was wrong with the item. So. I have a lot of defects of really, really good brands. Like here's another, I think this is, uh, let's take a look here. If I look at this item, uh, yeah, so as an example, I find a lot of Eileen Fisher that has been damaged. So it's difficult, right? What do you do with this? Because it's more than just a tag. It's a really, really expensive brand. Could you repair it and fix it? Maybe. So this is a whole bucket of stuff that could be repaired. Maybe, uh, I mean, I am learning how to sew right now. So maybe it's worth my time to go through these and rehabilitate all of these items. But I think that this pile is items of, that could sell for $50 if I actually repair them. So I don't know, maybe somebody out there in YouTube land wants this. Maybe I'll do a giveaway. Um, but you would have to know how to sew that so you could actually get it back. Um, one more thing that really helps out is I have this bag right here for donations. So anything that doesn't make my criteria, I'll throw it in there and then send it away. Okay, actually there's another thing that's really cool, which is internet. I actually have really, really fast internet here. So um, I will explain to you guys how to get internet here if you email me at chrisadailyrefinement.com. But uh, I actually have really fast internet inside this store unit with my router. The router is in my um, description link below. And below this is um, the Pokemon cards that I'm selling in a different store. So I sell Pokemon cards in one of my stores. I don't talk about every single thing that I do, but I do share a lot of it on this YouTube channel. So I would appreciate it if you guys smash the like button, consider subscribing. I appreciate your time. Let me know. There's probably a lot of you that have a lot of questions, so please leave them in the comment section below. Hopefully this will give you guys an, a, a light into what it is I do all day at my shop. Thank you.